something that God's been putting on my heart all day is a word preserve and you it's okay to keep standing I'll let you sit down in a moment but the word preserve and I'm so thankful that he preserves us if you don't know what preserve means it means to keep you in the original state before you needed preservation And so preservation means that something's coming to where you need protection from, you need covering from, you need to be in a state to where you won't get destroyed by whatever is coming in the future. And I'm so thankful for preservation. And many of you might be in a preservation state right now where you are facing struggles and facing life situations, facing hurts and pains and failures, rejections, a number of things, addictions, sins, nobody knows about. And through all that, you're still here. Through all that, even those that aren't here, what we would call a backslider, they're still alive. And they're being preserved. It might not look like it because of what they're going through in their situations. But the truth is, God is preserving them. There's preservation. And I didn't get a true revelation. I I really want you to pray for revelation about preservation. Because when you do, you'll realize how much God is really intervening and taking care of situations, and protecting and covering. But another aspect of preservation is it keeps you in that state. Some of you need to come out of the preservation state and go into an advancing state. You no longer need to live in the protection from all the hurt and the pains and the brokenness. You need to... Grit your teeth. You need to stand up and you need to go forward. Stop hiding in the shelter of the provision. I I need provision. You need provision. But there's times where it's time to come out from the shelter of the provision and go forward and begin to take new ground and be more than what you are at this very moment. I want to be preserved in trials and situations But if I just stay in that preservation state, I'll never become more. And in fact, if 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 you take a piece of meat and you preserve it, it will be preserved, but there is an expiration on the preservation. I don't want the preservation of God to run out in my life. It's time for me to step out of that. And I want you to, to get that mental picture that maybe you have just been, you're here, you're still here, but maybe you've just sat back because you feel like you're not good enough, you're unusable, you're broken, you're damaged goods, but the truth is God has preserved you through everything you've been through, all the hurts, all the brokenness, and you're here, and now it's time to step into something greater. God preserved you for something greater. With that said, now I'll go into my message and I'll start my timer. Proverbs 23, verse 23. Some of this might feel like teaching, but it will be preaching. Or treaching, but it is what God wants you to hear tonight. Proverbs 23, verse 23, and then I will read Matthew 13, 14, or Matthew 13, 44 through 46. It says in Proverbs 23, 23, by the truth, 
and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. Everybody say it out loud. Buy the truth. Sell it not. Also wisdom, instruction, and understanding. Matthew 13 and 44 says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking a beautiful pearl who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. I want to preach to you tonight on this thought, more of a question. What will you buy? What will you buy? Can we now pray for revelation and understanding of what he's trying to speak to us tonight? I want you to say it out loud in your prayer. Give me revelation. Let's pray it now. Father, I thank you for what you have done here already. But God, I'm asking now, give me revelation. Give us revelation of your word. Let it fall in our hearts on good ground. Let us understand what you're trying to speak to us. Anoint my lips and my mind that I might speak your word in a way that we could understand it tonight. Use me, Lord, for the advancement of your kingdom. I will give you all the glory and all the honor for all that you will do. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. You can be seated. What will you buy? In Proverbs, the wise man Solomon, he writes, buy the truth and do not sell it. In additional to buying truth, you should also buy wisdom and instruction and understanding. In Matthew, we see Jesus spitting out parables like a freestyle rapper. And he just is one parable after another. And he gets to this parable and begins to say that the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. And then he says again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking a beautiful pearl. He, his disciples didn't even know what he was really trying to say, and so he begins to explain it and go in further detail. And so I want you to really ask God to show you what I'm about to preach to you tonight. What will you buy? I don't know if anybody is invested in the stock market, but if you are, there is an investment term called buying power. How many knows what buying power is? Buying power is a term that means that the investor has an amount of money in the account to purchase securities. It's the amount that they have in their stock account to buy securities. And as I begin to pray about what God would want me to speak to us tonight, what will we buy? If we're going to buy something, it implies that you have buying power. How many's ever went out and bought a car from a dealership? You want to have buying power when you meet those salespeople. Because if you don't have buying power, they will take advantage of you. They will control the situation. You need to go to the salesperson and say, this is what I want, and this is how much I'm going to pay. And then they have the obligation to say, I'll accept it, or I won't. 
But it's your control and your authority to say, this is my buying power, take it or leave it. Many times we go and we are just hoping that we could somehow finagle some things around to somehow walk out of there with a new vehicle. But when you understand how powerful buying power is, it changes how you go in and communicate. And so, if we're going to understand buying power, you have to know what the currency is. What are you buying with? As Americans, we have a U.S. dollar. Is there a money that is higher than the U.S. dollar? It's worth more. The answer is yes. There's something called the euro. It is more valuable than our U.S. dollar. And even beyond that, there's something greater value of that, and it's called the pound, and it's what they use in the U.K. And that has greater power, buying power, than the euro. But what is the currency that you would buy truth with? Because it says buy truth and sell it not. And not only truth, but it says by wisdom, by instruction, and by understanding. Now the word here, depending what translation you use where it says by, it it really means to get or to obtain. But the reason it uses the word here by is because it gets its meaning from the word sell. It says do not sell it. And so because the word sell is in the context of the scripture, the word to obtain or grab, the meaning of it is now to buy. So we must buy something. How do you buy truth? How do you buy wisdom? How do you buy understanding and instruction? Because these are spiritual things. So how do you buy things In the spirit. Anybody want to just yell it out loud? How do you buy something in the spirit? Faith? Anything else? Exchange? What is it? Hope? Put your life into it. Very good answers. The answer that I was looking for was said, and it's faith. Faith is the currency of heaven. You cannot have anything that is heavenly without faith. You can't have anything supernatural without faith. And I want you to get a picture of buying something. When you go to the grocery store and you get Whatever you're trying to get, it could be a six-pack of, not alcohol, maybe a 12-pack of Coke or 7-Up, Mountain Dew, whatever you like, whatever your, your potion is. Maybe it's some fruit snacks. Maybe it's a rotisserie chicken. Maybe it's some steak. Whatever you like. You go to the store, and you go to the checkout, and you have expectation that when they say, okay, if it's steak, it could be $30. And you have the expectation that they're going to ask you for $30, and you know the buying power in your wallet. And so you say, okay, here's my card, or here's some cash, and I want to get this steak. How do you do that with spiritual things? How do you do that in the spirit? You need a healing? How do you do that with healing? How do you do that with wisdom or knowledge? I'm not implying that simply you have to earn a wage and then you can say, okay, here's enough. I can buy my healing. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am trying to get you to visualize 
is there is a price for spiritual things. And there is a currency in which you purchase things with. And it's faith. Why is faith the currency of heaven? It's because faith causes you to action. If you believe it, you will do it. If you don't believe it, then you won't do it. If you don't believe that baptism in Jesus' name is how you can get to heaven and receiving the Holy Ghost is the plan of salvation, you won't seek it. But if you have faith that Jesus said when he was asked, how do you get to heaven? You must be born of water and of spirit. If you will have faith in it, that's all you need. You've bought the truth. And now don't sell it. Don't sell it for anything. Don't sell it for better music. Don't sell it for an easier way. Don't sell it for just more lights or more music or a fog machine. And I'm not even saying all that stuff is bad. But what I'm trying to help you understand is when you find the truth and you've invested and you've said, I'm ready to buy this, don't give it up for anything. Your actions are what show you your faith. In Hebrews, it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It means that when you have faith, it produces results that you can tangibly see. It brings what was invisible into the visible. I don't know. I can't physically see that water baptism erases all my sins. But Jesus said it. I believe it. And so when I go in the water and I have faith that what I'm doing is washing away all my sins, it happens. It's that simple. But we in the 21st century have become a culture that if you don't feel it, it didn't happen. And so when the feelings are gone and the lights are turned off, and you're at home by yourself, and the enemy begins to talk and begins to speak to you, and you don't have the same feeling you had in church, and the emotions aren't stirred, and the singing isn't being sung, did I really receive it? Did my sins really get washed away? The questions begin to get asked. But here's the power about buying something. When you buy it, you get a receipt that says, this is what I just purchased. Here's what I own. This is mine. And how many's ever been to Walmart when they come and they say, hey, that's not in a bag. Let me see your receipt. And you show them your receipt and it's frustrating because you know you purchased it. You know it's yours. And you get upset about it. Why do you not get upset with the devil when he questions what you own and what you've bought? It's time to get worked up when it, your faith is in question because you're buying power. You need to take authority and boldness in what you possess because of your faith. Your faith gives you buying power. When you have lots of money, it's easy. I'll just throw out a large number. If you had a billion dollars, that's a lot of money. That's a hundred millions. If you were to be
be asked, hey, do you have a thousand dollars? And you had a billion dollars? Yeah, I I'll give you a thousand dollars. Now, when you have a thousand dollars, that's asking for everything. I don't know if I could give you a thousand, but hey, I can give you one dollar. At least that's what we do in church. Now I'm meddling. But when you have an overabundance, it's easy to say, yeah, I'll give it. I'll buy this. I can buy this. I can buy this over here. Hey, I'm going to buy a new car. I'm going to buy this new house. Why? Because you know that you have another 900 99 million. That was only one million of it. When you have lots of faith, it will be easy to give it out. When you have little faith, it causes you not to come to the altar, it causes you not to pray. It causes you not to read the word. It causes you not to have more faith. But when you have lots of faith, Jesus said all you need is this much faith, and you can do great things. But if you have a lot of faith, imagine what you could do. If you would take all the faith that you really have and take account and understand how much you have, it would give you a boldness and authority to speak some things, to pray some in a way that you've never prayed. Uh, some of you have so much buying power and don't even realize it. So for those that might be questioning, I don't have a lot of faith. I don't have much. How do I get more? How do I obtain more buying power? In the natural, you work hard. You make more money. And you put it in your investment account. And you let that grow. And that has interest. And that grows. That's how you would do it in the natural. But how do you grow faith. How do you get more of faith? I'm glad you asked because Jesus gives us an answer. In Luke chapter 17 and verse 5, I love, I love Jesus and how he talked to his disciples because when they ask him such childish questions and questions that seem like you should know that already, he is so easy to give him an answer. It says in Luke 17 and 5, The apostle said to the Lord, Show us how to increase our faith. In other words, in the context of what I'm trying to preach to you tonight, they said, Jesus, teach me how to increase my bank account. Teach me how to receive more in the Spirit so I can buy something with what you've given me. Help me how to invest. Give me more buying power, Jesus. How many want to buy more things in the Spirit? So he says, show us how to increase our faith. And it says, the Lord answered, if you have faith, even the size of a mustard seed. You can say to the mulberry tree, may you be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Now that's powerful. Jesus said, just a little bit can do so much. And you haven't even tapped into that yet. Because they never did that. They didn't realize how much faith, faith they really had. They didn't know how to read their investment account. And then it says, when a servant comes from plowing or taking care of sheep, 
Does his master say, come in and eat with me? No. He says, prepare my meal, put it on an apron, and serve me while I eat. Then you can eat later. Well, that doesn't sound fair. I worked all day for you. Yeah, but you're my servant. I purchased you. I'm paying for you. I'm taking care of you. And in turn, you're going to take care of me. And so Jesus begins to speak in this parable. And he says in verse, in the next verse it says, And does not the master thank the servant for doing what he has told you to do? Of course not. In the same way when you obey me, you should say we are unworthy servants who have simply done our duty. Jesus, what are you trying to say? I asked you, how do I increase my faith? You want to increase your faith? Jesus says you don't need a lot of faith to do big things. But he said, if you want to increase your faith, it says don't get upset when you come in from a hard day's work and you have to do more of it. When I'm asking more of you, when I'm asking you to continue to serve, uh, don't get upset uh, if you've worked all day and come in and expect a meal and I say, no, I want you to cook me food and then you can eat later after you've done the dishes and done everything you need to do. That's how you increase your faith. Oh, I don't like that. Jesus said, of course not. If the same way when you obey me, you should say, we are unworthy servants who have simply done our duty. That's how we increase our faith. Doing things without expectation of getting anything in return but just knowing that this is what God has asked me to do. That's how you increase your faith. We live in a culture and a society that has taught us that we should be praised for doing what's right. We get trophies and awards, and I'm not preaching against trophies and awards. It's nice. I have some myself. But if you aren't careful, you will want to be rewarded for every good thing that you do. Well, I deserve this because I did something good today. I helped somebody, so I I deserve this. I worked hard, so I deserve this. I I worked hard, so I deserve to miss one service. I, I... involved in this part of the church and so I don't need to be involved in this part of the church and you begin to say that you deserve certain things and you've earned certain things and that's the opposite of faith because you can't earn it faith is something that you believe in what you can't see I can't understand how a tree could move from one place to another, that the roots would come up in everything. But Jesus said, this much faith can do such big things. Do we believe it? Then why is it so hard for us to pray simple prayers? In Jesus' name, be healed. I could already hear in people's minds, I've done it before and nothing happened. I've done it many times before and nothing happened. It's not a faith problem. It's a practice problem. It's not your power. It's God's. Your job is just to have faith. 
And the more faith that you have, the more it will increase. And it might not happen the first time or the second time or the tenth time, but if you keep doing it, it will happen because your faith is powerful. And the devil would like you to to think nothing less. Well, it didn't happen the first time, and so it's never going to happen. But I, I believe Jesus allowed this situation to happen for me. Uh, and I hope he, he allowed it to happen for you. I hope you believe this. But Jesus prayed for a blind man. And it's, he asked the blind man, hey, can you see now? And he says, well, I can see a little better, but I'm not healed yet. And so Jesus said, well, let's pray again. And so if Jesus, who is God in the flesh, prayed twice, then what is keeping us from praying one more time? You need a revelation of what faith is. You need a revelation of the buying power that you possess. Because just a little bit can move mountains. But you've already bought truth. You've bought this truth. And you haven't sold it. But you haven't realized the power that you have in what you've purchased. Buy the truth and sell it not. Don't just buy truth, buy understanding, buy instruction, buy wisdom. I don't want to just buy one thing. I want all of it. Uh, Whatever I have to do, I'm going to buy it. Uh, And I buy it with my belief. Uh, Brother Stone King preached it here once. I was here when he preached it. Uh, But he said that you get what you believe out of it. If you can believe for it, you can get it. And it's not just a, uh, just a careless believing, like I'm going to get a million dollars tomorrow. But it's if you can believe uh, that what the Bible says is for you, then you can get what the Bible says is for you. If the Bible talks about angels helping people, then I believe that angels can help me. If the Bible says that he can save me from my sins, then he can save me. If the Bible says that Samson, in his greatest failure, God gave him strength one more time, then in my greatest failure, God can give me strength one more time. If in David's failure of murder and adultery, if God can... If God can restore him again, then he can restore me. If it's Rahab, Rahab was a prostitute. If God can graft her in, she wasn't even one of his children. But if God can graft her in, then he can sure graft me in. If in the book of Job, he spoke to the devil himself, and he let Satan come up to heaven and have an audience with him, then what's keeping me from having an audience with him? You just need to believe that if it's in the word of God it's for me you have power in your faith how many have credit cards just lift your hand if you have a credit card most of us because we live in a credit system Credit is a currency of the world. What is the credit currency of heaven? Anybody just want to throw it out there? What's the credit of heaven? I'll tell you. It's very powerful. The blood is the credit of heaven. You get credit because you don't have enough to pay the bill. You want a brand new car and you don't have enough money for it, you get a credit. You need a new house, you don't have enough money to pay for that house, you get credit. You go to jail and you need a loan to get a bond to get out of jail, you get a credit. How do you get credit in heaven? You use the blood. It's a spiritual credit system. I don't deserve it. I don't earn it. It's given to me. Now, the world has stipulations on how you receive credit. The world will say, 
what kind of job do you have? The world will say, how consistent are you with paying your bills? The world will say, what's the income of your whole household? Make sure that there's, if you don't have enough, maybe your spouse does. Or whoever, maybe your roommate. Or whoever wants to go on that loan with you. The world will evaluate. But the credit of heaven is simple. In Romans 6.23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. It's very simple. You have to have faith. Faith is your buying power. But it also gives you the ability to earn credit in heaven. You didn't earn it. You don't deserve it. But you'll get it. Your body is old. Your body's worn out. You were rough on it. You did drugs. You did alcohol. You destroyed your body. But it says, by his stripes, we are healed. I didn't earn it. I don't deserve it. But he made a way anyways. Because if you need credit in, in your spirit, if you are a spiritual deficit, all you need to do is plead his blood. Jesus, I need your blood to cover my sin. I need your blood to cover how I've been acting financially and I've been spending on what I cannot spend what I cannot pay back. God, I need your blood over my family. I need your blood over my job. I need your blood in every aspect of my life. I can't do it without you. There's no other way. I need credit in this situation, Lord. Apply your blood to it. And if you'll have faith in his blood, approved. You'll swipe that card and you don't have the money, but it says approved because he'll increase your limit. You know how you can increase your credit limit? Jesus already said, serve, serve. Just begin to serve. And as you need something, he will never let you go bankrupt. If you'll just serve him. There's another finance term if the musicians will come. There's a term called liquidate. How many's heard of this term? Liquidate. Liquidate means converting property or assets into cash or, qua or cash equivalents by selling them on an open market. In other words, if you're going to liquidate, it means to take everything that you have, to, to evaluate all that you have that has any value, and then you go and sell everything, and you get just a cash amount for everything you possess. They do this when someone dies and there's a, a debt, and they need to consolidate everything to be able to pay that debt. They go and they do an auction and sell everything. And then hopefully that that amount will pay the debt. And that's what liquidating means. I want to help you understand that when Solomon said, buy the truth and sell it not. And when Jesus begins to speak and he says, when, he's, when he tells his disciples that the kingdom of heaven is like a man, it's a treasure hidden in a field, and a man finds the treasure, and then he goes and buries it, and then he sells everything he has so he can purchase the field. Or it's like the merchant who goes and he's seeking just one pearl, not a bunch, 
but just one. And when he finds the pearl of great price, he liquidates and he sells everything that he has. If we could stand now. You need to begin to evaluate everything in your life. What do you have right now that has any value that you can liquidate? If it's not faith, because we're talking about fleshly things now. It's, it's fleshly things. If you haven't gotten that Illust- that metaphor here. I want you to picture your life, everything in it. Just close your eyes for a moment. And I want you to begin to evaluate everything in your life and and assess a value to it. Just begin to put a value to it. Think about your pain. Put a value to it. Think about your brokenness. Put a value to it. Think about your sin. Put a value to it. Think about the addiction. Put a value to it. Everything has a value. It's time to buy something new. If you need healing, it's time to buy something new. If you need restoration, it's time to take inventory, liquidate, and buy something new. If you need a new job, it's time to evaluate in the spirit and buy something new. If there's family situations, it's time to evaluate, liquidate it, sell it off so you can buy the thing that is high-valued. Here's what I'm trying to get you to understand. You can open your eyes. If I can get you to open your eyes for a moment. The devil would like you to think that your sin has no value. That the hurt, the failures, the addiction, all of it, it has no value. Because in heaven, it's not supposed to be there. And he wants to capitalize and make you think that you have zero value. But the truth is, Jesus said that it was a good investment. He thought that your sin was a good investment. You know why? Because he paid an ultimate price. To purchase it. He purchased all your sin on a cross. He paid a price, which is now our credit system. I don't have the ability to pay what the wages of sin have given me. But his blood has given me the ability to pay it off and buy something new. So you need to understand tonight that I'm giving my sin away. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to sell my hurts. I'm going to sell my bitterness. I'm going to sell my pain. I'm going to sell everything that this flesh and this world has to offer. And I'm going to buy something in the spirit tonight. For everyone, you're all in different stages. You're all in different 
avenues of your relationship with God. I'm here to help you understand. It's time to buy something greater than what you have. You need to seek for more than where you're at now because God wants to take it and he thinks that it's a good investment. You might not feel like you have a good voice, but just give it to God and see what he will do. You might not have a bunch of gifts and talents, but if you just have one, one it's enough for him to do something with hear me the the man the story of the man the rich man who gives the talents to his three servants there's a great principle that nobody has ever seen that nobody ever really looks at when he gets to the one that says master i knew you were a hard man and I knew that you would be upset if I didn't grow your money. So I didn't want to lose it. And so I buried it. But here's the great revelation in it. The master represents God and what he gives. Here's the great revelation is the man knew that everything the master has increases. Everything that the master possesses must increase. And he was too afraid that if there was a decrease, he would be judged. But if he understood what faith is, he would have understood that if the master gave it to him, it has to grow. It has to multiply. But he had no faith in what the master gave him. He had no faith in what the master blessed him with. All he could see is what he was. I'm not good enough to grow this. I'm not good enough to possess this great gift the master's given me. You're not good enough. But it doesn't have anything to do with you being good enough. It has everything to do with you understanding that what the master gives you, it will grow. It will multiply. What has he given you? And what will you buy? If everyone could move forward now, What will you buy? Some of you, you need to buy a family member back in the spirit. Some of you, you need to buy a miracle. You need to buy healing. Some of you, you need to buy salvation. You need to buy restoration. Just close your eyes for a moment. Up here. If you're up here, I want you to have your eyes closed. And I want you to focus on what you need to buy tonight. What do you need to buy? You need to buy peace. You need to buy some hope. You need to buy some truth. You need to buy some knowledge, some wisdom, some instruction. You need to buy some love. What do you need to buy tonight? The way you buy it is you liquidate what you have. Uh, that means uh, whatever you have it possession of now, go and sell it. Uh, say, Lord, I'm going to sell this. Uh, I'm trading it in. Uh, there's, another, there's another term in the finance world. It's called currency exchange. You know what you do with a currency exchange? When you go to another country where they don't accept your currency, you have to trade it in for the currency that they use. You've been trying to go in the spirit and buy things with fleshly currency. With the wrong currency. They're not accepting it. 
Because demons know, angels know what the right currency is. And your faith can loose or bind. I want to loose some things tonight. I want to give some liberty for some things tonight. You need to trade in what you have for a new form of buying. Can we do that now? Every eye closed, every hand lifted. I want you to picture something new to buy. Something in the spirit that you need. God, I need the Holy Ghost. Let me buy that. I need revelation of Jesus named baptism. Give me that. I'm trading it in. I'm trading my doubt. I'm trading my fears. I'm trading my sin. I'm trading my sickness. I need healing in my body. I'm trading it in tonight with faith. I'm going to have faith to move mountains. I'm going to have faith for healing. I'm going to have faith for deliverance. I'm going to have faith for salvation. I'm going to have faith that I could speak in tongues one more time. I'm going to have faith that I could understand what it means to be baptized. I'm going to have faith for my children to come home. I'm going to have faith tonight. Come on, what do you need to have faith for tonight? Increase your buying power.